This is Dr. Fred Foy Strang, and welcome to Moment for Mission. Moment for Mission is all about inspiration and encouragement to make a difference. Sometimes I feel like I get sidetracked or even derailed altogether in moving forward with my mission and vision. It might be in my personal or professional life, like I really need to drop 10 pounds, but I keep getting off track in that goal. Or I have this book that has been in progress for two years now. It's almost done, but things just keep putting on the brakes in its forward progress. In the next several episodes of Moment for Mission, I'm going to consider things that can be detrimental to our mission. And today's topic is busyness is detrimental to your mission. But first, let's have a Fred Foy fact. For today's fact, I want to share with you a why. You might be wondering, why am I telling you all these random things about myself? I'm certainly no celebrity, nor are any of these Fred Foy fact revelations earth-shattering. So what's up with this? Well, two reasons come to mind. First, I want you to know a little bit more about me other than just some voice. That I'm a real, regular person just like you. I think it helps to know about someone with whom you engage so you can realize their background, their biases, and their general bizarre idiosyncrasies. And secondly, I want to encourage you. You are a unique and amazing person yourself. You have an irreplaceable God-given personality, skill set, and gift mix. Your interest and enthusiasms are valuable and worthy. You are special and who you are and what you do and what you think are important and they need to be shared with others. You can make a difference for good in the world around you and beyond. My daddy used to remind me of this saying, God don't make no junk. Busyness is detrimental to your mission. Have you ever been in one of those conversations where it seems like everyone is trying to one-up each other by telling of all the activities and projects and stresses they have going on, or the breakneck schedule they are keeping with the family, or semi-bragging about the number of hours a week they're having to work? It seems like there is a certain unspoken but understood badge of honor associated with this kind of industry and bustle. You know, wow, you do sound busy, but let me tell you just how slammed and crazy my life is. What's up with all of this? Author G.E. Miller asserts that the U.S. is the most overworked developed nation in the world. And he convincingly backs up his claim with a series of telling facts. Here are a few. At least 134 countries have laws setting the maximum length of work a week allows. The U.S. doesn't have this. Americans work 25% more per year than Norwegians or the Dutch. In the U.S., 85.8% of males and 66.5% of females work more than 40 hours per week. Americans work 137 more hours per year than the Japanese, 260 more hours per year than the British, and 499 more hours per year than French workers. There's not a federal law requiring paid sick days in the United States. The U.S. remains the only industrialized country in the world that has no legally mandated annual leave. The U.S. is the only country in the Americas without a national paid parental leave benefit. 
The average is over 12 weeks of paid leave anywhere other than Europe and over 20 weeks in Europe. Zero industrial nations are without a mandatory option for new parents to take parental leave. That is, except for the United States. Now, I totally get what it means to work hard and to have to work hard to make ends meet. I have often had many side hustles going on in order to meet our obligations. But too often, we make the busyness a goal and an end itself. In 1905, Max Weber, German social theorist, argued in The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism that this idea of a work ethic emerged out of Calvinist theology with the Puritans bringing it along with them to the North American continent. Hard work and productivity were ways the Puritans demonstrated that they were among the elect whom God had predestined for salvation. Nevertheless, the Puritan faith prohibited them from working all the time. For instance, in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, the Sabbath was taken very, very seriously. It was a day of mandatory rest, which was enforced by law, by fines, and by social ostracization. As society has become more secularized, these faith set limitations to work and requirements for a regular cycle of rest and reflection or Sabbath have given way to unbridled pursuit that are eating away at our ability to focus on our organizations or our own mission and vision. Weber writes this, the pursuit of wealth divested of its metaphysical significance, today tends to be associated with purely elemental passions, which at times virtually turn into a sporting contest. Perhaps workaholism is becoming a new religious movement in and of itself, as people are trying to find their personal value and validation and purpose through this vehicle. In a recent article in the New Republic entitled How to Save Americans from the Hell of Work, Jonathan Malesic writes, When society becomes more secular, those limits on capitalists striving disappear. At that point, the capitalist spirit becomes unbridled. He continues, Theology puts work in a cosmic perspective. In the book of Genesis, labor is a consequence of human sin, not a means to prove human righteousness. Even God rests from the work on the Sabbath. When Jesus calls his followers, he pulls them away from their ordinary jobs as fishermen and tax collectors. He teaches them to look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor to gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Now, work certainly isn't a bad thing, especially when we enjoy our labor and find it purposeful. However, as we can see and likely we have experienced, it can get out of hand and become all-consuming. I worked for a small liberal arts college for a decade. My responsibilities kept being augmented and augmented until I was way too consumed with all of the tasks. One of my students jokingly but seriously called me the Dean of Work. I was way too much overcommitted and it was way too stressful. More often than not, more work, whether in the home, at school, at the job, in our volunteer efforts, can lead to more stress and that can result in a lower quality of life. When we do not have the time to unwind or take care of our home, spend quality and quantity time with our loved ones, enjoy a book or a movie or a hobby, connect with our friends, then our life just gets out of balance. This can take a real toll on our holistic health, mentally, physically, spiritually. And in light of being able to focus on, refine, pray over, 
or even work on a personal or professional or corporate mission, when we are consumed by all this busyness, then we are only left with the dregs of life energy to put on the things that are most important, our mission and making a difference. We may be overly busy with good things, but in order to have the vision and inspired energy to focus on and pursue our mission, we need to take real time with that mission. So let's not be lured into destruction by the siren song of misguided workism, but rather seek out those still waters of moments for mission where we can reflect anew and afresh on what is important and how we can make a difference for good today and every day. This is Dr. Fred Foy Strang. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great day.